Hi, and welcome to Gaia County Tourism Live. I'm Caitlin Howley, the Assistant Director with the Gaia County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Today, I'm joined by Ms. Marianne Campbell. Marianne is a descendant of the original French 500 who founded Gal Police. Marianne was also instrumental in the establishment of the GCCVB, and we're very honored to have her on the show today. Well, thank you, Caitlin. And today, we're going to delve into the history of the city of Gallipolis. And we're going to start out by talking about Gallipolis dates back to the 18th century and encompasses events in both France and America. Now, in America, with the revolution behind them, Congress was eager to settle land west of the new states. So as a result, land companies formed to buy acreage or at least gain rights to the land. One such company, the Ohio Company, purchased one and a half million acres along the Ohio River. Another company, the Scioto Company, gained an option to another three and a half million acres bordering on the Ohio Company purchase. The Scioto Company's plan was to attract buyers and collect money to pay Congress. The Scioto Company sold their rights, but never did they pay for the land. The buyers were a group of Frenchmen who, during these same years, were struggling with impending revolution and the fear of the guillotine in their homeland. They were very easily convinced by an unscrupulous salesman, William Playfair, to buy land in the Ohio Valley. They embarked to what they thought would be a land of milk and honey where fish leaped into one's arms, grapes grew in abundance, and tallow candles could be picked from the trees along the Ohio River. Their journey led them to Gallipolis, one of the first settlements in the Northwest Territory. The French embarked from La Havre de Grace in February 1790 aboard five ships, the Recovery, the Patriot, the Scarborough, the Liberty, and Lady Washington. It was a long and hard journey. The Recovery sank at sea. However, no lives were lost. The first French ship landed in Alexandria, Virginia in May where the immigrants soon learned money paid in France for deeds to the new land had never reached the Scioto Company. For weeks, they debated what to do, and they sought the counsel of both Congress and President George Washington. The Scioto Company helped pay their expenses to travel over land to the new settlement, buy supplies, and have housing ready for their arrival. Major John Burnham as, and his woodsmen from New England were hired to construct 80 log houses and four block houses along the Ohio River. They arrived at a crude settlement carved from the wilderness on October 17, 1790. The site was called Le Place by the French and is known today as the Gallipolis City Park. The area became Gallipolis, meaning City of the Gauls. The name derives from the Latin Galli for Gaul or France and the Greek Polis for city. The settlers were unaware of the hardships of frontier life since most of them were from the French middle class and aristocracy. They continued to live in the formal French manner to which they were accustomed. But with perseverance and the application of their trades, they established a thriving river community in a short time. Five years passed before Congress came to the aid of these settlers, granting them free land in the French grant located in Scioto County. Only a few families chose to go there and those who remained in Gallipolis were forced to buy their land a second time from the actual owners, the Ohio Company. It was not long before migrations of Virginians, New Englanders, Welsh, and Germans began to increase the population of the area around Gallipolis. Just after Ohio became the 17th state 
in 1803, one of the first acts of its legislature was the creation of eight new counties, thus Gallia, from the ancient name for France, in honor of the counties first settlers founded and it, when it was founded. So by the mid-1800s, most of the original French 500, as they are presently known, and many of their descendants, had either died or moved from Gallia County. Gallipolis today still bears vestiges of the French and remains a proud reminder of the county's heritage. The Gallipolis riverfront entrance statue is called Le Vieux Premier by artist William P. Hopin. It was unveiled in October of 1990 during the city's bicentennial. The statue symbolizes the unconquerable spirit of the first settlers. And then, of course, we had the visit of Lafayette, General Lafayette. And he came to the to Gallipolis in 1825. And so we wanted to talk a little bit about him going to the Our House Museum, now known, it was the Our House Tavern then. And I had a very special connection with him, so you might want to mention that. Yeah, um, the, so the Our House Tavern Museum is located about half a block from the Gal Police City Park in downtown Gal Police. Now, your family has a very interesting involvement in the arrival of General Lafayette during his tour of America in May of 1825. Lafayette was entertained at the Hour House and when it opened in 1819, and it's now a museum. And it's owned by the Ohio Historical Society and operated by the Friends of the Hour House. And Marion, your family, like you said, has a very interesting connection with the arrival of General Lafayette. Could you tell us a little bit about that? I would just love to. Through my mother, uh, who was a direct descendant of the French, who landed here in 1790, it means a lot to me. It is a great heritage to live up to. My great, great, great grandfather, Nicholas Thibonin, was among the 500 Frenchmen who arrived at what is now our park front on October 17, 1790. So when General Lafayette visited Gallipolis in May 1825, he was met at the landing by Nicholas Thibonin, who was acquainted with the general while he was still living in France before coming to America. He was immediately recognized and cordially greeted by Lafayette, although it had been almost 35 years since they had seen each other. So from the landing, they then went together to the Our House Tavern. Wow, that's such an interesting family history. I so. And what was the document that you said that you found this information? Well, all of this was documented in Hardesty's History of Gallup Police, which was published in 1882. And of course, if I may share just a little bit of that family Absolutely. history, in 1803, Nicholas Thibonin was elected the treasurer of Gallia County. And then in 1808, he was elected Gallia County Sheriff. He was a farmer. He lived in Gallup Police Township and he raised cattle, sheep, and hogs. In 1802, he ordered an earmark for them. It was two swallow forks along with his brand N.T., which I thought was interesting. Green Township adjoins Gallup Police Township, and the first election in Green Township was held at his home on June 24th, 1809, and at that time he was a Justice of the Peace. Then in 1816, he erected the first sawmill on the banks of Raccoon Creek. So that kind of gives us a little bit of background, and I'm very proud to be a descendant. Now, if someone was interested in um, finding a little bit more about their history, and maybe their family is um, linked back to Gal Police, where would you recommend that they start? Oh, absolutely. They would go to the Gallia County Genealogical Society, to Henrietta Evans and her staff who work there, and they have all of this fantastic history. And Hardest is History from 1882 tells everything about everybody. 
I always find the uh, the history of the founding of places so interesting. That's that's one of the reasons why I love the story of yes. the French coming to Gao Police. Yes. Um, so if you have any family that is maybe a part of the French 500 or they came here to Gao Police or in Gallia County, you can always check out the Gallia County Genealogical Society and see if those ladies have some information for you. Um, and you can also go to the Our House Tavern Museum, yes. and they have a lot of information and um, things from uh, the original French 500. And they even have probably my favorite historical item is General Lafayette's coat. I was hoping you would mention that. That is so exciting to have that right here. I, I think it is, it is very cool to be able to, to kind of step back in history and you just you walk right in and, and the, the docents who run the Our House are just, they have so much knowledge of that time period. Right. And um, I always love to joke. Now I get this privilege, but I love to joke with them that I get to go upstairs and try Lafayette's coat on. <laughs> Did you really? Oh yeah, they were like, no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> But it's a really cool place to, to go in there and find that information. Mm -hmm. And um, another thing to kind of get you started if you're interested in the, the history is the, uh, the walking tour that oh, yes. the Gaia County Convention and Visitors Bureau has. And it is, it is all of downtown Gao Police around the city park, and it goes to some of the older homes. And it does have some information on the Our House and um, about General Lafayette. And it's a really fun way to kind of to go out and find something different. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of goes along with the, um, the Visitor Center Summer Program, which is the City Passport Challenge. Um, the Passport Challenge gives um, everyone, students, kids, teachers, parents, everyone, the opportunity to go throughout the area and uh, learn a little bit about the history and the things that are offered in Gallia County. We have the city and we also have the county challenge. Now, Marion, you work with the Gallia County uh, Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. And they're actually a location on our city challenge. I know. We had children there the other day who came to see and find out about Passport. Good. I'm happy to hear that. Mm -hmm. So it's a really fun they opportunity. They brought a third grade class in to see us. There was, what, 50 kids with them? Yes. Yep. They came in our office, too. I was surprised that they could all fit in our office. And I'm just like, okay, come on, little sardines. Come yes. on, fit in here. Did they come into your all's office, or did you meet them outside? They came into the office, and then they were out on the porch as well. Oh, yep. So... Uh, the Passport Challenge gives um, kids and adults, teenagers, all the opportunities to go out and meet with a lot of the Gaia County local businesses and organizations and learn a little bit about how they affect our community and what they can do for us. So it's, one of, it's probably my favorite project that I've started. We have a lot of treasures in Gallipolis that people should see. We really do, and the Our House is also listed on there. They're listed as a selfie location, which means you don't necessarily have to go in and get a little stamp on it. However, if you are oh so intrigued from today that you want to have a tour, you can always call them, and they will be happy to set up a tour with you to check out the Our House, and I really recommend it. It's one of my favorite places oh, it is. to Thank go. Oh, it is. Thank you so much. There in the French Art Colony was also a location yes. on our city passport challenge. There's just so much history in our downtown area, which is one of the reasons why we started a city-specific passport challenge, right. because there's just there's just so much to do. and. If you do the passport challenge along with the self-guided historic walking guide, it gives you a lot of information there, which is really, really oh, nice. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a nice afternoon, day kind of thing to do. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my favorite things that you get to do. Now a little bit more detail on the passport challenge. Um, each of the challenges have 10 locations. 
Now you go to these locations and in your little book you can either get a stamp or you can take a selfie or you can take selfies at all of them if you're a little shy and you don't want to go in. However, I recommend going in and you can meet some really fun people and they can give you the kind of inside look on things. Now at the chamber you guys are getting all ready for the River Wreck Festival oh, so yes. they have all the inside details on that so if you're interested in that uh, be sure to stop by or give them a call and they can get you all set up and they're always looking for people who are interested in volunteering and um, setting up as well. I know the visitor center is going to be set up there um, and the River Wreck is the third and fourth this year. July 3rd and 4th. Yep and so they'll be there and there's going to be all kinds of fun stuff. There's there's the fireworks on the 4th and it's just so and much musical fun. musical entertainment and all kinds of things. Yep, so we'll have that. And you can also pick up a passport. Um, we'll be there passing those out. And uh, if you uh, do the passport challenge while you're out there, we'll have a bag ready for you to win because everyone who completes the passport challenge gets a nice drawstring bag in it with some goodies in it. Um, our bags this year were donated by the Colony Club boardroom 46 and the French City Academy and we have all kinds of goodies in there um, OVB and Holzer Health Systems have donated some stuff mm -hmm. and then the Visitors Bureau we've gotten some fun things in there so it's there's a lot of things you can get from it and if you actually complete the chat every time you complete a challenge you get entered into a drawing and we're going to be doing the drawings at the end of each month. So if you complete it between now and May 31st, you get entered to win a city pool pass, mm -hmm. in which it's, it's a family season pool pass. So you get all, it's, it's all summer long. So um, we definitely recommend that you check out the Passport Challenge. And we'd like to also thank the city of Gal Police for donating the family season pool pass. Um, now this runs until September 5th, so make sure that you get it um, before then and get started. You have the whole time to get it done. And um, you can download those at visitgalia.com or you can stop by our office. We're on 2nd Avenue off, across from the post office. Um, this week is also National Travel and Tourism Week. Yeah. So we have all kinds of fun stuff going on today. I'm lucky to be joined by Miss Mary Ann to learn about the history of Gal Police. And um, we have all kinds of different things going on. For example, yesterday um, we awarded Miss Whitney Clagg to be our first Gallia County Tourism Ambassador. So we're really excited to, um, to bring her on for this scholarship program. Um, so we're, we're really looking forward to it. Uh, as you can see here, the, yesterday, see, Monday, um, we were able to have the official proclamation of Travel and Tourism Week read by uh, President Commissioner Tony Gallagher. And so now we're all official and ready to go for the, for the week. And we have all kinds of stuff going on. We have different st school groups coming in and doing the Passport Challenge. And um, we are also going to be visiting South Gallia High School on uh, Friday and we're going to be doing a presentation with them about how tourism impacts our community and doing some fun different things with them and giving some prizes away and stuff like that. So we're really excited to be working with the students at South Gallia and the teachers there as well. Um, now a big thing for us that we have every Travel and Tourism Week on Saturday, May 13th of this year, is the Cabela's King Cat Tournament. Anglers may fish from the Ohio River to the Belleville Lock and Dam, uh, south of the Robert Seabird Lock and Dam. Now anglers may also fish between the Canal River and the Buffalo Bridge. Um, this year, as for every year, there is the kids tournament or the kids fishing rodeo. Um, kids between the ages of 12 and under can participate in that and they have the opportunity to win a $1,000 scholarship. There are six opportunities for you to win that. 
Um, if you're, would you like some more information, you can contact us um, at the office at 740-446-6882, or you can check them out on Facebook at facebook.com backslash KingCatUSA, and the cat was, is with a K, not a C. I learned that the hard way. I was like, I can't find it. Oh, there it is. So um, we'd like to thank Marianne for coming on with us today. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. And we, we look forward um, to diving in more of the heritage of Gallia County and give you a nice overview of you know, what, what we're made of and how we got here. Um, so I'm Caitlin Halley with the Gallia County Convention and Visitors Bureau, and we hope that you join us next time. Thank you.